Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM20 Builder Nation story from Cliftonville in Northern Ireland with me Daniel. It's part 26 today and we're back slightly earlier than planned. We've got another Europa League game this time away at Sparta Prague, a crucial one in the stage of the group we're at. And we played Dundee United away from home in a Tunnock's Caramel Wafer Cup. An interesting challenge, a competition we lost in the final of last year. Hamilton probably not as good as Dundee United are. And they've still got Lawrence Shankland up front. Worth three and a half million, a superstar striker scoring over a goal a game for Scotland. It's certainly going to be interesting to see if we can hold him off because he is a superstar. We've also got some other challenges in that team and then we face a big side in Europe. So it is a very difficult week for us. But it is important that we try and compete for trophies in the biggest competitions. And these two probably constitute that for us in addition to the Premiership, which we're nine points clear in. So if you're looking forward to the two big games, as well as sign-ins as well, we've got one free agent coming in. Please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily content from this series every weekday at 4.30 and every weekend 1pm is the slot. We'll have weekly live streams as well with FM21 just around the corner. But let's start by having a look at our new addition to the squad. It's probably the biggest name we've ever had here. But it's at close to retirement age and we brought him in mainly to be part of the mentoring group as a leader. We've also had Sammy Kadira and Dimitri Payet flirted with with a trial. Dimitri Payet and Kadira both retiring at the end of this year. Sammy Kadira, I'm tempted because mentally he is some addition. But we found someone who might well be better on that front. And that man behind my head is Gary Cahill, the former Chelsea and Crystal Palace man. He's made 61 appearances for England, now 35 years of age. We actually needed a backup centre-half as it was, because one of our backups, Ben Hall, is regularly in the international squad now. So when we get to the break, we've only normally got one backup centre-half available. So Gary Cahill fills that for 350 quid a week. He's retiring at the end of the season, and he's a leader. His personality is incredible, and he's a leader for our mentoring group, which means for the likes of Connor Crawford, the unambitious 17-year-old, he could be the most influential man in this series, in terms of an individual. So I'm interested to see how that plays out. We've put him straight in charge of that group and we've got all of the youngsters working with him. So we'll wait and see how that plays out. I wouldn't expect him to play much. He's come off the bench once in the Shield and he might make a few others in the international breaks where we had off games. But otherwise, just more for off the pitch rather than on it. But a massive name nonetheless and winding down to retirement and sort of gradually moving towards coaching, I guess. His staff attributes are pretty good, so I wouldn't rule out him staying here either. A head of youth development for the future, maybe even an assistant manager, who knows. But let's have a look at the schedule to see our recent results. You were with me as we lost 1-0 at home to Krasnodar. That a tough game in Europe a few weeks back. Since then, we have largely been winning, but there's been some difficult tests. So we had Lahn in the third round of the Bet McLean Cup. We largely had our backup side for this one. It was two days after Krasnodar. We didn't have many people fit. Dylan McCande was one of them though, and he turned up with a hat-trick, including two in the last three minutes to wrap up a 4-3 comeback victory. Conor McLaughlin, the right-back, got the early goal. Hale and Parkhouse, the two-star strikers Lahn brought in in the summer, both getting a goal in that one. But they're still flattering to deceive in the league, and I don't quite understand it. A 2-1 win followed at home to Coleraine, away from Coleraine, sorry. It was Hepburn Murphy and Adam Idart, the two-star strikers back in form. And then a two-all draw at Glenarvan. Crawford and Daly with the goals. The backup team largely in this one after a few tired legs from Coleraine. And as it is, we were lucky to get a point in the end. You might say, why do you say that when Glenarvan got one in the 90th minute? But they had two glorious chances in stoppage time as well and probably should have nicked it. But as it stands, still invincible in the league. We lost 2-0 away at Krasnodar. We held them off for an hour, but they're just too strong, the Russians. Before a 5-0 win away at Warren Point, Naismith, McCande and Lansbury gave us a 3-0 lead. McCande then got sent off for an awful challenge. Was reviewed, was appealed, but it wasn't upheld. And then Daly and Crawford still managed to add to it. Warren Point, one of the weakest sides in the league. A 6-1 win against the police force of Northern Ireland. It was a bit of a bizarre tie this against the second tier side, right at the bottom of that second tier as well. Connor Crawford with four, he seems to score in big numbers when he does get them. Hepburn Murphy and Naismith with one apiece as well. And then a one-all sneak victory in a Shield semi-final against Glen Torren. Connor Crawford with a first half goal as our backup team, with the rest mostly on international duty, wrapped up a place in the final for us. That's taking place against Ards in January, one of the two sides that we didn't beat this season in the league. 
but plenty to look forward to and more trophies potentially on the cards. All is looking good on the pitch, all is looking good off it. We've got a youth intake preview which should be here for the next episode as we'll try and show you Besiktas and Linfield. But today it's about Dundee United and Sparta Prague. So let's get into the first one in the Tunnock's Caramel Wafer Cup. Somehow we're favourites. I don't really know how because Dundee United have got Shankland and he's 10 times better than any of our players. But we have got our first 11 fit. Just Nico Williams struggling slightly after the internationals. He didn't actually play for Wales. He was on holiday because he was struggling with fitness. But aside from that, everyone's fully fit and we'll play both of these two games, providing we don't get injuries. So we've got Bazuna in goal, Williams and Burke the fullbacks with Wood and Johnson at centre half. Lansbury and Matthew Smith in the middle. Smith now rated the best player at the club with his improvement. Middleton and McCande on the wings, Hepburn, Murphy and Idar up front. Adam Idar just having a struggling patch at the minute. Has he been three without a goal? Just the two, but didn't play well in that one either. The bench is strong, the team is strong. We're just about as good as we can be. So let's go and get into this and see if we can get through in what is possibly, outside of Europe, our toughest test of the season so far. 4-2-3-1 for Dundee United. They have got Lawrence Shanklin skipper in the side up front. Lots of other good players in the team as well. It will be interesting to see how this goes. I'm sort of worried about them. Although the other players are good, it is a one-man team. There's no doubt in that. Shanklin's starting the game tired, so hopefully he won't be able to do 90. A few of the other first teamers dropped out as well with fatigue. But there's their backup striker, Apere, and he looks as good as any of ours as well. So 15 gone, it's quiet so far, but I don't hold high hopes for this game. It might be a bridge too far. Well, that was an anti-climax, wasn't it? Half-time, nil-nil, no highlights, and only four shots on target. One of them for us, three for Dundee United. We've got to hope that superior fitness gets us now. Nico Williams will definitely come off. We'll judge the rest based on performance as Glass has a free kick for the home side into the box and headed just wide. Terry Taylor with a good chance there, but we survive it. And now we're at the other end. Oh, it's offside. Matthew Smith heads in the free kick. Great delivery, Middleton. But the flag was up and unfortunately it wasn't to be. An hour on the clock. Nico Williams will be replaced by Conor McLaughlin. And aside from that, we'll get back into it. We'll give it five more and then we'll look at other subs. Well, Rashawn Hepburn Murphy's not had a good game, so Connor Crawford on up front. Seems to score goals galore when he plays games at the moment, so we'll give him a chance. And in the same now for Middleton on the left wing, he'll be replaced by Cal Naismith, who's been really impressive when he's come in this season. And we'll just hope that there's a moment of magic somewhere. Really, it's been a bit uninspired from both sides. Dundee United have been the better, but we've not really seen anything for it. So we're going to demand more, five minutes to go, but it's the home side on the front foot. A Shankland, for some reason, taking a throw in on the left. Falls for Powers in the middle. Out to Cooney, but it's intercepted by Burke, though the clearance doesn't go far enough. Only reaches Powers. Long ball wide, which McCande tries to get to. Lansbury does intercept, though, to Crawford. Crawford's got two with him, but goes back. Long ball from Johnson down the right. McCande picks it up. Takes on the left fullback. He's got one running off him in Crawford. Into the box to Henry Lansbury. And that is a brilliantly worked counter-attack. It's been a very poor game and neither side has deserved a goal. But that was a thing of beauty. We counted out wide. We had loads of underlapping runs and it just worked perfectly. Shanklin puts one in at the other end from a header. And thankfully he's miles offside. So with two minutes to go, we're surviving. It's 1-0 to Cliftonville. And the Tunnock's Caramel Wafer Cup dream continues. You might be seeing that thumbnail for the second time. So we're going to do our usuals here. We're going to time waste, reduce that tempo. We don't want to get too excitable at the moment, really. We'll slow the pace down in possession. And we'll just get back into it. Nothing too drastic. Four minutes of stoppage time to see out. And it's Dundee United coming forward. Been a much better game in this second half. As Barjanaz finds a pere off the left wing. Oh, it's a great strike. And we said off the bench he was as good a striker as anyone we'd seen. And he's proven so there. It's 1-1. Dundee United back on terms. We'll go back to our normal tactic. And now it's going to become squeaky bum time. Is it extra time or is it penalties? Two minutes of stoppage time gone. Henry Lansbury puts a corner in. Headed away to the edge to Barjanaz. And he goes long down the left. And Meekson picks it up, sorry. Switch of play towards Glass. It's a great counter from Dundee United. They nearly turned it around in two minutes there. The shot dragged comfortably wide in the end. But very much warning signs there. It's a long ball forward down the left-hand side by the keeper. Finds Naismith. Switch of play is poor, but McCande gets on a loose clearance. Inside to Crawford. Beats his centre-half. He's in one-on-one. -on -one. Connor Crawford to win it. Oh, the keeper makes a very good save. It's behind for a corner. We don't see it. 
And with 15 seconds left, we've got to throw on the left. Ryan Burke will take it. I don't know why it's so slow. To Adam Idar, to Naismith. Two inside of him. Keeps possession. Crosses to Makande. Straight into the keeper's arms. The flag was already up. But that was the chance to win it, I feel. And we are going to either extra time or penalties. Whatever this competition provides. Makande intercepts a clearance, though. Crawford to Adam Idar on the right. We're still going for that winner. But he's intercepted and Hutchinson clears downfield. Only as far as Johnson. And we are going to penalties. 90 minutes couldn't separate the two. And it's as close a game as we expected. The penalty takers will be Adam Idar, Connor Crawford, Henry Lansbury, Cal Naismith and Ryan Burke. Matthew Smith will drop down there because he is not as good as the others. So it will be Ryan Burke in fifth place, Matthew Smith sixth, Connor McLaughlin, Nathan Wood, Dylan McCande, Connor Johnson and Gavin Bazunu. In we go to penalties, Adam Idar up first. Can we make it through to the semi-finals? Here comes Adam Idar, right footed, not had a good game and not taken a good penalty either. It was in the corner, but it was feeble and the keeper got there comfortably. Adam Idar's goalless run continues. Shanklin, the star man for Dundee United, he makes no mistake whatsoever. Right in the corner at speed and Shanklin gives Dundee United the advantage in this shootout. Connor Crawford, the 17 year old up next, right footed again, into the corner, that's a good penalty. And it's 1-1, but Gundy United have got a penalty in hand. Barjonas will take it. He set up the equaliser, of course, with that lovely through ball to a pere. Barjonas with a penalty. Right-footed, into the corner. Too easy again. Every penalty that's gone that way has gone in. And now we've got experience to turn to. Henry Lansbury steps up third. The fifth successive right-footed penalty. And a fourth in a row that goes successfully into that corner at speed. And Powers will step up for Dundee United. We need some heroics from Bazunu to level this up. Bazunu against Powers. Bazunu can't get there. Five in a row to the keeper's right. And they're all going in. As Cal Naismith will take the first left-footed penalty of the afternoon. He has to score really or it's all over. Naismith's penalty and he puts it down to the keeper's left. Good penalty from the left footer. And now it's Glass. One of the star men for Dundee United. He's got a chance to give them the lead with one penalty left. And he does to the keeper's left. Bazunu had no chance. One penalty to go for each side. We have to score and then we have to save. Ryan Burke will step up first. Let's see if he can do his part. Ryan Burke steps up. Must score to keep us in the game. It's a lovely penalty. Right into the side net and down to the keeper's right. Just opened up his body with the left foot and it's a beauty. And now the pressure's on Gavin Bazunu. He must save this penalty from a Pere, the man who got them here in the 90th minute. If he doesn't, it is Dundee United who will go through and our Tunnock's Caramel Wafer Cup dream will wait for another year and we'll be missing out on that thumbnail as a Pere puts it in. Bazunu went the right way, probably should have saved it. Wasn't right in the corner at all, but Dundee United threw 5-4 on penalties and unfortunately, we're out of our first competition of the season. And we will be back to face the mighty Sparta Prague in the Europa League group stages in five days time. Can we bounce back from that disappointment? Well, my lack of familiarity with the Northern Irish football calendar and some of the extra competitions means we might have an additional episode. Because we have just been drawn in the All-Stars Ireland Champions Cup final. So I'm guessing St. Patrick's Athletic won the Irish Premier Division and apparently we come up against them now. So a good side St. Pat's Athletic. They look decent here. Let's have a look at what they're like. So we've got important players there. There's two stars. So Lee Desmond, the centre half. Very good. And then Robbie Benson, who we tried to sign before, who's a good midfielder. He's going to MK Dons in January, but he's still here for the final. Rory Feely, I've had him football manager before somewhere. Was it Torquay? Or maybe even Dorkin? One of them. We definitely had him. But that's a good game to have. Another chance to win a trophy. Let's see when it will be back. Oh, so it's a two-legged tie before the Besiktas Europa League game. So we'll show the second leg of that one and Besiktas at home. That will be the next episode rather than Linfield being the second game. But for now, it's Sparta Prague that's the focus. The Europa League group draw is not looking great for us. Us and Sparta Prague adrift on three. And if we win that game, we'll be back in contention to the final game. So let's go and get to Thursday. We'll be back for the game. We're back for Sparta Prague then. We've got to make the most of this because we're starting to struggle in the Europa League group. And what's to say that we'll get here in the future? We just don't know. Bryn Morris will come out of the squad because of course he is cup tied. Ethan Galbraith back in after his tiredness. Nico Williams is fit to play at right back. 
And aside from that, I think it will be the same 11 and the same 18. So no changes in the starting lineup today. Just Galbraith coming back onto the bench. He's potentially leaving in January. Championship club sniffing around him. And we're just having a good spell at the moment. So let's go and get into this one. And just hope that we can sneak a victory and keep us in it for the last day. But even a point here, every result helps the coefficient, helps the bank balance. So let's go and do it and try and make a big difference to Northern Irish football. There's a couple of fun facts after that as well. 4-2-3-1 for the home side today. Of course, so close in the home tie, but it was Rada who scored an absolute screamer at the end. Still a very good player and is still going to be a challenge for us today. But let's remind the boys the pressure isn't on them. We expect nothing from these Europa League games. We're already three points better off than we expected. Now can we make it four or six? So throw on the right for Sparta Prague early on and they've had the better start according to the stats. They've got it a right back and it's inside to Plachy, out wide to Vishek and into Stratsny. And he's brought down by Burt with a really clumsy challenge. We've gone to VAR, we know it's going to be a pen because every time we go to VAR it's a pen. It's been alluded to in the comments a couple of times actually. I think in FM20 at all I've seen one that's then not been given. Every single time they come back from this screen it's then a penalty. So let's go and watch it. Here we go. The uh, little image is coming out of the square and the penalty is given. It is the usual service. Sparta Prague have the penalty kick. Will it be Rada? No, it's Plashy who's taken it. He's stepping up right footed against Gavin Bazunu. Bazunu down to his right. He's let it in again. He's got paper wrists, this kid. Everything else in his game is brilliant, but he cannot save a penalty to save his life. Two that he should have saved. One in the Tunnock's Caramel Wafer Cup. And one there as well. And we're behind Sparta Prague early on. Looks like it's going to be a long evening. Just over half an hour gone. We're back as Nathan Wood picks it up at the back. Finds Burke to Middleton. Middleton's been robbed in possession. And that's the difference. The tempo we just can't keep up with at times here. But we are successful from these. Matthew Smith with a long ball over. Hepburn Murphy shot blocked. It's behind for a corner. Set pieces have worked for us this season. Let's see if it does so again. Lansbury will take it. It's an outswinging delivery from the right to the front post and headed away by the goal scorer. And Vishek brings it away down the left. It's a two on two momentarily. They've got four up in support now. We're rushing back and Glenn Middleton with a super tackle just puts pay to that counter. The half time whistle goes. We've actually evened it up in terms of the stats. The penalty from Plashy is the difference and he's a top quality player as well. But for us, we've been in it. We've got a chance. So let's say we appreciate the efforts, get the lads on board. And hopefully the second half will bring something special. Maybe an equaliser. That would be the start of it. Here's Bazunu with a goal kick. Just a minute in. Out to the right hand side. Makande flicks on and Hepburn Murphy gets there first. Nico Williams over the top. Idar's in. Has to score. Oh, he's tipped wide. It's awful from Idar really. I don't know what's happened to him. He's just gone off a cliff and he cannot finish now. As Lansbury puts it into the box, it's too close to the keeper. Though he did very well to hold it in fairness. Five minutes gone in the second half. A much better start from us. But now it's Sparta Prague on the front foot. The goal scorer picked it up again to Vishek. The two of them seem to have run the show so far. Vishek wasn't closed down at all. And Bazunu tips it over the bar. A good effort from the edge of the box. And it's a corner kick for the home side. The Czechs put it into the box with Tavora. Out to the back post to Rada. The hero from the first game for Sparta. But it's straight to Bazunu and he holds comfortably. We're still clinging on at the moment. While it's only 1-0, anything can happen. And it's Ryan Burke with a free kick. 40 yards out central. It's really poor. Johnson gets it on the left. Loses possession though, but he nicks it back. He's still got it down there. That is a bizarre sequence of play. Cooper eventually brings it away for Sparta Prague. Down the right-hand side. Pressure from Middleton. Wins the challenge, but doesn't come away with the ball. Kubar with a good reverse to Rada. On the right wing to the byline. Back to the back heel to Stratsny. Into Kuba again on the right. There's so much territory for Sparta Prague. There's so much pressure on us. And I just feel like we're getting carved open here. It's into Mali. It's a good save by Bazunu. But the professional legs are showing now. They are getting on top on the counter. An in-swinging corner will be taken. Tavora puts it in again. To the back post to Plashy, who heads just over the bar. 1-0 Sparta Prague. It should really be more now. And they've got another throw on the right. It is relentless pressure. Strasny to Tavora. He'll give it away on the left. We've got pressure on. Idar might nick this. He does. He nicks it off Gabriel. He's got Hepburn Murphy alone in the middle. Has to pass it. He does. Hepburn Murphy's put it wide. Oh, he had to score. It was such a good opportunity. He'd beaten the keeper. And he put it far wider than he needed to. 
Oh, we can't afford to waste them. We have given away two awfully good chances. And I don't know that we recover from that. Adam Idar picks it up on the left again. We've got this two on two again. But the two strikers ever the reliable, not today. Idar crosses Hepper Murphy in. And I take it all back. Adam Idar with the cross. Hepper Murphy with the volley. And it is Sparta Prague 1, Cliftonville 1. And again, we are causing shockwaves in Europe. Not enough to keep us in it or even lift us off the bottom of the group. But for the coefficient, for our bank balance and for Northern Irish football, it could be such a big goal again. But we've got to hold Sparta Prague off because they have been relentless in this half. And they're coming forward again with Stransky. Crosses to the back post to Kubar. Beats the defender, but it's a great block from Burke. Middleton clears it down the left. And now it's Idar on the break again. Taking on this centre half. He's roasted him every time. Idar into the box. Shoots just over the bar. He beat the keeper, but he could not beat the crossbar. It just went over. And unfortunately, it's still 1-1. Dylan McCande will be replaced now by Noah Daly. Getting some legs on out wide. Lansbury in the middle by Galbraith. Just give us a bit more solidity there. A little bit more of a shape than what we had previously. And at left back, Ryan Burke, who conceded the penalty, will be replaced by Tyreek Mitchell as a wing back on defend. Nico Williams can drop to support as well. Just save a few of those legs as we get into the last 15 minutes. Can we hold on for another precious European result? We've got a throw on the right-hand side in an attacking position as well. Might get better yet. Ethan Galbraith hits the crossbar via the keeper. He certainly fooled me by shooting, and I'm sure he caught the keeper out as well. But somehow it doesn't go in. We've got another corner headed away. Wood picks it up on the left-hand side. Crosses to the back post. Hepper Murphy is 2-1 to Cliftonville. What a cross from the central defender. And Hepper Murphy poaching again. His second volley of the day from the six-yard line. And it is 2-1 Cliftonville. And this could be another brilliant moment in our history. We've won away at Besiktas. We beat Celtic at home in the qualifiers. And now we're leading at Sparta Prague and we could still have qualification in our hands after this as Stransky comes forward for Sparta Prague. They're on the left hand side. They're always oh, skinned him. He skinned Nico Williams and that is a great save by Brazuno. Tips over high to his left hand side and it's a corner kick to defend. If we win here, this is momentous, but it doesn't look good as Kubar's putting more pressure on. Out wide to Novotny. Chance to cross to the back post. Tavora's there and he heads over unmarked. He had to do better, but it is still 2-1 and we are still clinging on. Tator takes the goal kick for the home side. Long downfield and it's flicked on for Vishek. Out to Tavora who switches the play. Wood heads away to Middleton. Can we wrap it up on the counter? Adam Idar taking on the centre half again. Into the box. Beats him. Shoots just wide. He's done everything but score today in fairness. He has been brilliant on the counter. And we're into four minutes of stoppage time now. Long kick by Bazunu. Hepburn Murphy loses out, but it falls for Noah Daly. Skins the left back into the box unopposed. Noah Daly shoots straight at the keeper. Could have done better there. Really should have in truth. And with two minutes of stoppage time to go, the pressure is very much still on. Tavora picks it up on the left. Through ball, which Johnson heads away. Galbraith hoofs forward. Idar will chase. He should get there first, but what can he do with it? Adam Idar crosses. Hepburn Murphy can't get there. Stratsny heads away. Finds Daly on the right. His cross is blocked. Back to Nico Williams. His cross finds Middleton, and that does wrap it up. Glenn Middleton makes it three, but I think we might have VAR here. It looks like offside's given. It looked on from where I was sitting, but it might not matter. Four minutes are up. We win at Sparta Prague. And despite the usual pattern that we followed in qualifying, we have won two games away from home in the Europa League. It is Sparta Prague 1, Cliftonville 2. We said Idar and Hepburn Murphy could cause trouble in Europe. And they have proved it today. What a performance from the two of them. We were so solid defensively. We were so strong going forward. And we have won another game in the Europa League. £490,000, more coefficient money coming in. And going into the final game against Besiktas, it's in our hands. We beat them in the last game. If we beat them again, we are through, regardless of the goal difference, regardless of any other results. We've got the surprise of the All-Ireland Champions Cup final coming up as well. So that will be the double in the next episode. The second leg of that cup final against St. Patrick's Athletic and in Besiktas at home in the Europa League. Only three days separating all of those games. It's going to be hard to win them all, but we have to prioritise Besiktas. A chance at the Europa League last 32 is something we may never get again in this series.
So if you did enjoy those two games, very dramatic spectacles, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM20 content from this series, as well as weekly live streams and FM21 just around the corner. There's also a link to our podcast channel in the eye above. But a big thanks for watching this one. You'll continue to support with the series. I really hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. As we cause more shockwaves in Europe, we'll be hoping for one more when we come back next time around.